Hi everybody, it's me, Daniel again. So before I get started with today's video, I'd just like to say I hope everybody is doing well, staying safe in their own homes, and remembering to wash their hands. Alrighty, so for today's topic, I'd like to talk about this video game called The Cat in the Hat on the PlayStation 2. This game is based on the 2003 film of the same name starring Mike Myers, and in my opinion, I thought it was an absolutely unlikable piece of sh**. Anyway, if you enjoyed the movie, good for you. I'm happy for you. But yeah, overall I thought the humor in the movie was very unfunny, only laughing at one joke in the entire movie, and also the cat himself was very, very unlikable. He was really annoying, also very creepy, oh my god. And also along with the fact that I think this movie stinks, movie-based games have this stigma for being lazy cash grabs on the basis that they're usually rushed to coincide with the movie itself. So right off the bat, th this is this should be a disaster. Like, there's no way this could be any good, right? Well, as the title of this video suggests, surprisingly, no, this actually isn't a bad game at all. So, let's talk about it! Before I delve deep into this, I want to mention my history with this one. I originally played this game on the PC as a kid way before I got into console gaming. It was a game I had fun playing to a degree, but the experience was unfortunately ruined by the amount of game-breaking glitches there were. In the fourth world, there were times when the first trampoline in the level would just not make you jump, making all the other trampolines glitch out, which meant I had to restart the entire thing if I wanted to make progress. Super aggravating. But even worse was that there were times when the game just crashed. Every single time I beat the final world, the game broke down, which meant any chances of 100% completing this thing were impossible for me. Oh yeah, and I remember very distinctly that this platform in the third level just flat out did not work. You couldn't jump onto it. So when I saw these again in the fourth world, I had legitimately no idea these were platforms, so I kept falling to my death. And I'm sure there were other errors that I'm missing. There was a good game in there somewhere, but it was ultimately a glitchy mess! Please don't play the PC version of this thing, it is trash. So when I got a PS2 in 2011, after my freshman year in high school, I wanted to try this version of the game to see if it fared any better. Thankfully, the answer is YES! Not only are none of the glitches I mentioned before present, it is just way more polished of an experience in general. Now, it's not perfect, as sometimes certain sound effects don't play, but that's much more forgivable in comparison. This version also has animations and hazards that weren't there before, and also features extra playable content where you can actually enter a door that gets you to a bonus world. More on that later. This version is so much better to play. When you first start the game up, you get an in-game cutscene where the cat explains the story while you're presumably going through a tunnel. Okay, here's the story. It was a windy, rainy day. Then, to everyone's surprise, I turn up and cheer up some kids. But then, what do you know? My magical crate is opened, the lock stolen. Magic leaks out and the whole world is in danger. Thus I, the most stylish cat ever to be seen in a hat, you know it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to differ with you on that. Have to recapture all the loose magic which has transformed the house and recover the lock from Mr. Quinn, the nasty next door neighbor who's also collecting the magic in order to make himself immensely powerful. Huh? This is Dr. Seuss Limited, how can I help you? Hey, what's this him being immensely powerful? That wasn't in my script. He started going power hungry a few minutes ago. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, so the script's changed. Mm -hmm. and, and when exactly were you planning on telling me, you know? <laughs> you know, the star of this little adventure? 
You know, maybe if you weren't ugly as piss and actually rhymed like in the books, I could have told you earlier, you jackass imposter. Okay. You're not the real yeah, cat okay. the Get a okay, job. Whatever. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the ride is almost over. Thank you for flying Cat in the Hat Airlines, and please get ready to press the start button so we can get this whole mess tidied up. The story in the game takes some interesting deviations from the source material. Now, full disclosure, I'm checking the Wikipedia page for the plot for convenience sake, because I don't want to suffer through the film ever again. So if there's a chance I'm getting any information wrong, that's why. In the movie, Larry Quinn wanted to marry Joan, the mother, for her money and send Conrad to military school to get him out of the way because he's an unemployed slob in debt. He couldn't even get near the cat in the original film because he's allergic to him. But here, as you previously just heard in the intro, he's collecting magic released from the crate to make himself more powerful, and he ain't afraid of no cat. <laughs> You will never stop me, Cat. A little voice inside of me is saying, this is a really bad idea. Is it cliched? Sure, but at the very least, he's more of an interesting threat here. And also in the game, the Cat actually gets more of a punishment for his shitty actions. Instead of using a convenient machine to clean the house like in the movie, he needs to get his ass up to travel wherever Quinn hides in, inside various household items, going all bonkers crazy from the leaked magic, creating insane worlds inside them. The cat must collect all the magic inside to restore the objects, and try to chase Quinn out once and for all. And in case the cat wants to lead from this mess and not take any responsibility for it, well, tough sh**, because the two children won't let him. Come on, cat. You've got to clean up in here first. Come on, cat. You've got to clean up in here first. Conrad and Sally will not let you go anywhere else until you've cleaned up this part of the house. It is honestly so satisfying to see this miserable cat get what he deserves. Released on November 5th, 2003 here in North America for the PS2 and original Xbox and developed by Magenta Software, The Cat in the Hat is a 2.5D platformer, meaning that the gameplay is 2D where you can only move left and right, but the visuals and environments are all 3D polygons. You run around, jump, kill or dodge enemies, solve puzzles, and all that fun stuff in 11 different platforming levels. Which sounds kinda short, but these levels usually take a while to complete 100%, so I have no issue with the length. As I said before, your goal is not merely just to get to the end of the stage to chase Quinn out, but you also need to collect magic within the stage itself which are these little colorful shiny objects floating around. A lot of times they are in plain sight, but other times they are contained within crates. If you don't try to collect these, you can't access future levels. Collect some extra magic first. An essential mechanic within the game is bubble blasting. Bubble blasting an enemy from your umbrella will cause it to be trapped inside the bubble. You can shoot the enemy towards other enemies, boxes, walls, and also switches and explosive devices in the background. But sometimes even that isn't enough. Sometimes you need to fire the enemy through a goo machine to create goo balls to break open metal crates and blocks. But that's not all. You also have the ability to slam down wooden crates and switches, as well as gliding over certain gaps with your umbrella if you need to while jumping. Honestly, with how all the gameplay mechanics are utilized, it feels very well thought out. Be careful though, as even if you get past creatures, there are a bunch of other hazards that you need to dodge from the background, as well as hazards to dodge from above you, below you, or even behind you. And as the game progresses, dodging all these obstacles combined gets more and more challenging. Some of my favorite moments in the game are when I go past a whole bunch of hazards or get in a real tight spot and get the feeling like I barely made it without getting hit. Alright, let's get this- oh my god, oh my god, I want to avoid that parrot, come on! Alright, let's get that piece of magic, come on, come on! Oh god, oh god! Oh, please don't get hit, please don't get hit! Oh my god! Oh, oh, oh. oh thank god. Phew! It's not too hard, though, as you can collect cakes to restore your health. 
And also there are plenty of parts to collect which grant you extra lives. And I managed to get pretty overstocked on them. So even if I died on occasion, it's usually not that big of a deal. So all you need to get through it is determination. You'll also be seeing Thing 1 and 2 throughout the stages holding on to one of four keys. Make sure you shoot objects at them so you can obtain the keys yourself. Three more keys to go! Two more keys to go! One more key to go! <laughs> You've got all the keys to this level's bonus door. If you get all four keys in the stage, you unlock a bonus door towards the end of the level. You can collect extra magic in one of the crystals to help you unlock a secret world, all while trying to stay away from a hazard coming after you, as well as the enemies. Because if you come into contact with any one of them, you have to start the entire thing over again. You can also collect clapboards, which shows you promotional photos from the movie itself. I'll be completely honest with you. I hear a lot of people say that the production design was one of the better elements of the movie, but I am not one of those people. Looking at these photos reminds me so much on what I personally dislike about it. I really don't care for the color scheme that they're using. Like, I don't like the use of whites on the ordinary houses. Speaking of which, I don't like that they made them ordinary houses, instead of the drawing style used by Seuss himself. I suppose maybe the intention was that the filmmakers wanted to make the normal world ugly, to make the two children feel trapped in a place they find super boring, but still, it doesn't change the fact that I think it looks blah. I also really hate the use of yellows and light greens too. Can you tell I really don't like the visual look of the movie? Oh well. Let's get into all the little elements that I think add to the enjoyment of this title. First off, you know how I was just complaining about the visuals in the movie? Well, the game still uses the creepy character designs and ugly walls of the house, but there are a lot of other elements to the visuals that I think look really nice. I really enjoyed the designs for many of the enemies and hazards here, some of them definitely having that sushi and art style. And also, look at the backgrounds! The programmers decided to put in various animations in the scenery, making the worlds themselves breathe and come to life! That extra attention to detail is very much appreciated. Yeah, lick that ice cream! Next is the dialogue. There are many points in the game where you talk to the fish. Well, it's about time you got here! This mess isn't gonna clean itself! And whenever you see me, come over and I'll give you some advice, because I know you're going to need it. He'll usually give you gameplay tips, but sometimes he says some things that I find kind of funny. Isn't it odd? I never spoke a word before today and now I can hardly stop! I was taking a bath. I'll talk to you later. Hey, have you been drinking from my bowl? Water, water everywhere. Shame the cats can't swim. Why did the cat cross the road? Because he made a mess and had to tidy it up. Okay, I'll try to use small words. In front of you is a red and white tornado. Jump into it and you'll spring high into the air. No telling where you'll land, but it probably won't be Kansas. Can't you ever just read the manual, cat? Watch out for the enormous cuckoo coming up, which you'll have to avoid. And while it would be amusing to see a bird eating a cat, it isn't going to help get the house clean! Where to next? Well, up ahead there's a strange contraption called a teleporter. This will deconstruct your molecular structure, transport you across the world, and reconstruct you back together again. Apparently it's quite painful as well, but don't let that worry you. Listen up, cat! Over there is a prime example of what I call a goo ball. Collect it and bubble blast it from your umbrella. Whatever it hits will go BOOM! Now even you should be able to understand that. Ah, the return of the cat with a lower IQ than he has fingers. But I think some of the funnier dialogue from the fish comes from his descriptions for various enemies. Those yellow bouncing balls of fur look quite friendly. But if they land on you, then you won't think so. Ah <laughs> Let this be a warning. Avoid bees with bent noses, because they only like to sting. No! 
I'm sure that huge hairy beast just wants to run up and be friends. Unfortunately, he isn't too great in the breaking department, and so his friends end up looking like pancakes. Ow! I think those strange blowfish-like creatures are trying to evolve into birds. Fortunately, they can only bounce. Unfortunately, if they land on you, you'll find they're quite painfully heavy. Oh! Those strange dinosaur creatures only just survived extinction. Understandably, this makes them quite angry. Try not to get run over by one. I meant to do that. Then there's the cat himself. Now, weirdly, despite saying in the beginning of the video that I found him very unlikable, in the game here, I actually didn't find him very grating at all, surprisingly. Sure, there are certain jokes from him that I didn't find very funny. I came, I saw, I kicked its ass! <laughs> yes, this is family entertainment, isn't it? But then there are plenty of other quips from him that I find very charming. I'm not entirely sure why. Is it my nostalgia? Does this snarky version just happen to work better in a video game format? I honestly don't know. For example, when you're done talking to the fish, he's usually a mean-spirited bastard towards him. What do you know? You drink from the same bowl you swim in. Big words from someone who'd look good covered in batter! One fish, so many sushi restaurants. Hmm, strange to think you're at the bottom of the food chain. I don't know, that advice sounds kind of fishy. You really get around for someone stuck in a bowl. Remember, fishing is considered a sport. Why don't you take a hike? Oh yes, you can't. I bet you swim backwards around the bowl just to make your life interesting. You know, you need to get out more. So what carnival do they win you at? You're not really gold, are you? More like a dull orange. When was the last time your bowl was cleaned? Did the Grinch get this kind of abuse? <laughs> I don't think so. Where's a shark when you need one? That hurts. Well, you did ask for one. I can never remember. What is it cats eat? He also does wisecracks whenever you enter a world. Time flies when you're having fun. Well, this could take a while. Welcome to the jungle, baby! Ah, mon chéri. Let us make beautiful music together. Be careful now. Bird fur smells really bad. And it hurts! I've heard we're all just cogs in a machine, but this is ridiculous. I'll never understand this human obsession with baths. When you're a cat, there's no way you can't lick. Ew. Here are some of the other remarks I enjoyed. Singer! Yeah! I think I've actually forgotten what I was doing. Room, baby, room! Hey! Wow! Zoom! Woohoo! How can a cat have such a dog of a day? Express elevator going down! Ouch! That smarts. Goodbye. Cool world. What's that first step in center? Aren't we forgetting that we've got a job to do here? Meow! Well, that was pretty humiliating. Yeehaw! <laughs> Yummy yum. Ouchie! Mmm, good. Looks like I still have the umbrella. <sighs> I knew I should have had more than 18 hours sleep last night. <sighs> I knew I should have had more than 18 hours sleep. Ouchie! Yes, he wants more than 18 hour ouchies. He's addicted to pain. Give him more! <laughs> However, if you do find the dialogue annoying, fortunately, you do have the option to turn it off. Here's another thing I really enjoy the music. From what I gather, it was composed by a guy named Keith Leary from Game Audio Limited. Although his name did not show up in the end credits, so I'll have to take people's word for it. The soundtrack does such a great job of capturing the zany tone and theme of each level. And the songs are also really catchy to me. It's really hard for me to choose favorites since I love so many of the tracks here. 
So I decided to boil down my favorites to 10 tracks and show samples of them to you. Here we go! Some of the sound effects for the creatures are fun. <laughs> Aww, poor 
doggy. She was minding her own business and now you had to bubble blast her. Aww. The game does have some issues though. Sometimes the hit detection to well, blasting objects in the background is so specific that it takes a few tries just to hit it. Take this crate in the fourth world for example. I first tried hitting it while on the ground. Nope. That didn't work. Alright, I'll try hitting it while jumping. Wait, what the hell? That didn't work either? So then I tried to bubble blast the crate in the middle of my jump with very specific timing. Oh, thank god. That was really annoying. Or sometimes it's easy to misjudge which angle I needed to hit the object due to the fixed camera angle. And there was one point where I accidentally died because I couldn't tell where the platform was below me. I also want to mention that when you jump on a trampoline, the cat's body doesn't move, so it just ends up looking weird. Now I want to mention something that I think could be a potential problem to some. There is no rhyming in this entire game. You know, something that is very essential for Dr. Seuss's works. Now does this bother me personally? No, not really. I can easily overlook can that. But I can definitely see some fans being turned off by that. But by far, my least favorite part of the game were the boss fights. There are three of them in this game, where you need to defeat Quinn by bubble blasting into the tailpipe of his machine. You need to hit that tailpipe nine different times, dodging three separate attacks before you can shoot part of the crab walk out. And if you happen to miss that within a certain time limit, you need to hit the tailpipe three more times before you can try that again. It gets very repetitive and very tedious after a while. Sometimes enemies you catch are just disappear for no reason, making it unnecessarily even more tedious. And sometimes I felt like I just got hit for no apparent reason. The final boss fight though, oh my god. It takes the word bullshit to a whole new level. This will be our final battle, Cat. A battle you will not win. Trying to dodge his attacks while trying to bubble blast enemies, on top of the fact that most of the platforms disappear after you touch them, was such a bitch for me to beat. So it took me a few deaths. But I was finally able to take the bastard down with only one piece of my health left. ruled the world if it wasn't for that darn cat! Cat 3. Strange men from next door. Nil. Result? The suave, sophisticated, and incredibly handsome cat wins! Woohoo! Yeah! And what do you get after 100% completing the entire game? So, you've cleaned up all the mess, stopped Quinn, and found and completed all the hidden areas of the house. I never thought I'd say this, but I guess cats are good for some things. Okay, that's the whole shebang. Yup, that's it. That's the entire ending. What a disappointing anticlimactic ending. It really is not much of a satisfying award at all. Oh well. Despite my criticisms, The Cat in the Hat on the PS2 is a game I still have a lot of fun playing, even today. I notice reviews for this game are mixed, but if this game looks appealing to you, give it a try. You can get it on eBay for $20 or less, and I think it's well worth that price. I highly recommend it. It's very underrated. Before I end this video, I want to admit a mistake I did. So there were a few points in the game where I was struggling getting past enemies who blow projectiles towards me, especially this area in the final bonus world where I needed to get past two snails. Ouchie! And I was originally going to bitch about that being too hard in the video, then I remembered some advice the fish said earlier to me. You can form a shield with your umbrella to protect you from incoming fire. You can't move while you're under this shield. 
and it will not protect you from goo explosions or creatures running into you. For a very long time, even after playing the game many, many times, I admittedly didn't even know what this defense was supposed to be used for. And then I wondered if I needed to use that for those specific enemies. So I decided to briefly test it out on the snail in the second world. And it turns out, yeah, it did work for defending yourself against projectiles. So then I realized it was my own fault for f***ing it up. Oops. I feel very silly for that mistake, and I'm not proud of that. Sometimes things will just go over my head, making me not understand them. Perhaps in all fairness, maybe the game should have told me this way, way earlier. But regardless, it was definitely my own fault for making the game much more harder than I needed it to. Oh well. We all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. All I can do is own up to them and hopefully improve upon them. Well, I hope you all enjoyed watching this new Things That Make Me Happy video, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Don't you just want to watch the DVD instead? No.